Welcome to On The Spectrum. I'm your host, Terry Matthews. And if you don't know, I have a son named Jaden who was diagnosed at the age of three with autism. It's important to me, our Let's Talk segment, where we have the opportunity to hear real life stories of individuals, not only who are diagnosed, but manage, work with, handle, or deal with individuals on the spectrum. So today I have a special guest. He has an amazing story and he's gonna talk to us about living with autism, what it's like, and how the stereotypes we need to begin to break about those who have been diagnosed with autism. Welcome to the show today, Ardika. How are you, Ardika? Good, how are you, Terry? So this is, I'm sure, a lot with all of the lights mm -hmm. and the cameras and everything that's happening at this moment. Um, you know, as I said earlier, before we got started, please feel free at any time to kind of stop if we need to take a break, okay? Yes, okay. I understand. So you're how old now? I am 21 right now. And when were you diagnosed with autism? I was about the age two and a half years old when I was first diagnosed with autism. Mm -hmm. Like from when I was born up until that time, um, I, there wasn't really much of an issue of me interacting and, and with the environment and people around me. But by that, by that time, when that age hit, then I started to exhibit symptoms of not talking as much and interacting with the people around me mm -hmm. and sometimes some sensitivity to loud noises in big environments. So then I got, I, I got diagnosed and from there we decided to uh, seek out for early intervention as soon as possible. So when you were nonverbal or you stopped speaking, do you remember those times? Like even though you couldn't speak, do you remember things around you or what people were saying or even what you might have been feeling? Yes, I, I do remember, uh, I do recall talking um, at least like uh, a good amount of words and have been able to remember uh, certain memories. Really? Like even some, some during preschool when I was super young, like maybe some uh, cr big events like around Christmas time. Wait a minute, preschool? Or, that's a good memory. <laughs> <laughs> at, least I, at least I remember my uh, preschool teacher, too. You did? Just she must have left a good impression for you to remember her. Oh, yes. Okay. So what, what during that time when you were diagnosed with autism, um, do you remember what you used to feel like with, with dealing with other kids when you felt withdrawn from those children? Well, uh, it, it was just that Well, the, well I really started to uh, feel... Uh, the effects of uh, the diagnosis when I was in kindergarten under another teacher of mine who um, her name's uh, uh, Mrs. Mest and uh, up to this day her and my other preschool teacher uh, Mrs. Henry they've, they've taught me a lot and they have also like I, I've, I've worked a lot a lot with them especially during the time when I was in kindergarten and I just I was in a big cafeteria and I didn't feel com comfortable around everybody and I had a reaction and my teacher Miss Vest in kindergarten um, sat with me in the hallway for about a week or two and then uh, to comfort me and then after that I got over it and that was just my very first memory that I knew that you know something uh, should uh, needed to be done about uh, my uh, my my sensitivity to loud noises and big environments and other behavioral and social skills that I needed to pick up on that I could uh, that I couldn't pick up on as fast as other students could. You know, I think that that's amazing. You know, especially for our viewers that are out there to understand that teachers can make such a big difference in the lives of our kids. Oh yes, and for them to be sensitive to what your needs are and take a moment to spend time with you, because being out in the hallway, you know, of a classroom and to, to still make you feel included and not make you feel bad for what it is that maybe they didn't understand what's going on in the inside so kudos to those individuals your teachers and people who are like them oh yes so can you help me out with a few things i you know a big part of our show again is is educating and providing awareness mm -hmm. and um getting rid of stereotypes and i'm so happy to be sitting here with you today to hear at one point you were nonverbal, and and now you you speak great <laughs> yes um I was it always it. this easy to speak it was, uh, I mean, I could speak like words and sentences. Learning that was, uh, educate, like academically was 
it was like uh, normal. But like in terms of being able to socialize and behave on the spot in certain situations and contexts, that's where I really have to uh, learn how to develop, uh, to develop and adapt to different situations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I would pick up on um, the, like the appropriate behaviors. Appropriate behaviors is a key word. Like sometimes I used to have difficulties um, responding inappropriately to a certain behavior. And that was something that, I, that my kindergarten and preschool teacher worked on with me. Wow. So what would you say kind of changed for you as you got older when you got to middle school and high school? Was it more challenging? What things would you want people to understand um, when it comes to individuals on the spectrum? And I know everybody's different, yes. but it's always good to, to hear, you know, um, what people such as yourself living with autism, what they would want people to know. Yes. So. After go, so I went through the elementary schools and those kinder, and the kindergarten, just the, the program with my uh, teacher that I that I still like uh, look look up to, and I still like transitioning into middle school. Mm -hmm. It for me, it I it, some in some cases, you know, making there are some certain friends. I have to be able to choose my friends. It's about choosing friends wisely. Like there's gonna be those friends that are that I'll get along with very well. And there are also those groups of friends that are in like another like another group. Sometimes the popular group. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I've tried to uh, get involved with them, but I'm like the also in the, like during middle in high school. I'm, I'm like the quiet one mm -hmm. within that group. And if that's the case, I, I still wanted to try and get along with them. But if that's the case, then if if uh, if they're not uh, really uh, talking or giving attention, then it's best that I look for another group of friends. So the challenge is finding the right uh, set group of friends in middle and high school that will help with work with uh, somebody that has a diagnosis like me. Ardika, I think that that's so amazing for you to be able to say that um, and to communicate that to people. And you know what's even more amazing about the statement you just made? Yes. As adults, we need to learn how to do that still. Yes. <laughs> Knowing what kind of group of friends um, to be with. So it feeling like maybe sometimes you, did you ever feel like sometimes you didn't belong into a certain group? And how did you feel, how did you handle that if you felt like you didn't belong in a certain group? So if I didn't belong in a certain group, um, sometimes like I, I still try to get along with them and it, it would just be the same cycle. Like I'm still like the quiet one in a, in a circle mm -hmm. and then I'll leave. And then sometimes what others think about me, sometimes I'll get uh, a little too worried about, oh, what, what do they, well, what do they think about me? What do they, do they know I have some, um, um, autism mm -hmm. or whatever else, uh, di dis di disability, not disability, ability that I have, mm -hmm. or are they going to, are they going to uh, talk about how um, I'm, I am the one quiet uh, student in the group? Okay, so sometimes it, it is worrisome because I think sometimes people don't understand that about autism. And yeah. Whether you have autism or not, I think a lot of people worry about what people think about them. What would you say today about how people thought about you? Do you not care anymore? Have you learned to just embrace autism and say, hey, it's on them if they yeah. don't understand it? Yeah, so I'm very open about sharing my autism, especially now with all the new friends that I make throughout college and like later on in high school too. Like I don't mind them uh, knowing that I have autism as I think it's a great thing uh, to have. It's, it's an ability. Yeah, <laughs> it is an ability. And uh, it's just it's just so uh, it's just so important to have like the, and even even today like I'm, I would still maybe some sometimes it still happens today that I don't I get uh, worried when I don't when I when I'm not talking as much in a in a group even in like some of the groups that I'm in uh, that I'm close with sometimes I'm still sometimes I there is a time where oh uh, it's hard for me to follow, keep up with the conversation mm -hmm. and I just feel a little awkward and. It's like, uh, so are, are they gonna 
uh, they're probably thinking I'm still the quiet one. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not that you're quiet, but it's more so keeping up with the conversation. Yes, keeping up with the conversation some, sometimes. And that's all right. Sometimes I sometimes and some other people feel that oh maybe the conversation doesn't have to do with them and they'll they they'll just sit back, relax, listen. And that's all conversational skills that I would learn in just social groups, like social exchanges is what I am involved in in Temple University. That was the group that we all have a conversation together about how our college life is doing mm -hmm. and maybe some difficulties. And we all went to present at the Philadelphia Autism Conference about our own stories of autism. That's, I mean, so you had to stand in front of people explain and be very open and vulnerable, yes. um, which is actually a skill that we should all use. I think it would make us better people if we were open and vulnerable because we all have challenges. They oh, just yes. look different, right? Mm -hmm. So you said college. College is a big deal. Dating is a big deal in college. Yeah. How is that for you? Like, I, I so far, I haven't uh, started date, dating anybody yet or I've been in a, I have not been in a relationship. Mm -hmm. I do... Hopefully, I do want to uh, get involved in one later on in life, hopefully by like around senior year. But the thing is, like right now, I'm seeing other, a lot of my other friends, they're in a relationship. And, I'll, and I just have a lot of questions about relationship. Like, how do they, how do they keep up with the relationship? How do they, how do they look after each other? How do they manage their time so that they're not falling behind their academics that's just it's just a lot a lot of questions that i have and I'm, and it makes me think consider like it is it time or should i wait another year let me explain something to you that's probably the smartest thing i've ever heard yeah. <laughs> and, and and i think in all honesty if we learned to think a lot like individuals that are on the spectrum and embrace the way they think about things, we will grow and learn so much as people. Yeah. Because you're right, when you're in a relationship, it takes a lot of time. Yeah. They want you to be on the phone, you got schoolwork that's due, <laughs> projects that's due. And you gotta go out for Valentine's Day dates. I'm and, in yeah, the so. middle of a final. You know? I actually had an exam on last Friday and it was it was Valentine's Day the day before. And could you imagine having a girlfriend? Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it would have oh. been very difficult because you would have wanted to meet the needs of your girlfriend by taking her yeah. out for Valentine's Day, but you need to not fail the final. Yeah. You but know? since I'm not in a relationship uh, at the moment yet, like, and, I saw, and I had to study, like, I, I think I, feel, I felt confident about how my outcome of the exam. Which is awesome. That was on Friday. That was like the day after. So, yeah. it was, so sometimes you have to make those sacrifices. You have to choose your battles in a way. Right. And hopefully the, girl, the, the, the significant other would be able to understand and, and work around it. And that's, what's, that's the work that you need to do in order to find the, 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 a good relationship. So in, in my, my opinion, that's I, what I'm learning. Well, you've learned very well, and you've taught a lot of viewers out there that, that they, so? this is something that they too need to think about as well. Yeah. So I know um, that you are in college, and I know that there is something that you're studying in college. What is it? I am studying neuroscience right now because I would like to use that towards uh, researching um, the, the, uh, the science behind autism. I would like to find some discoveries behind that. Really? Neuroscience? Yes. How hard are those classes? You don't need a girlfriend if you're in neuroscience. <laughs> so how okay. hard are those classes? Uh, those classes, uh, sometimes they can be uh, challenging, but they're, they're interesting, but sometimes they can be challenging. And sometimes uh, professors have a certain way of, grade, of handing out assignments, exams, and grading, grading um, assignments and exams, too. And sometimes it's either... I want to work to get as high of a grade as I can, which I know I, I care a lot about my grades. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they, sometimes most of, most of the times they work work with me. Sometimes um, the their, the way that they grade things may uh, may uh, help have me uh, fall back in a, in a way. So class, the class doesn't necessarily change. I think this is important for our parents yeah. to understand that when your kids go to college, they don't necessarily change the classroom environment just because you have autism. They just accommodate accommodate, accommodate you if there are um, different learning 
di learning differences that you may have or needs that you may have um, yeah. to learn. So that's interesting for our parents to know. Well, I believe you're going to become an awesome neuroscience Thank you. scientist, and I believe you're going to solve a lot of things for individuals on the spectrum. I think you're solving a lot of relationship problems right now, and you don't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, at least in my, uh, whatever I can uh, come up with in my perspective yeah. as uh, diagnosed with ASD. So, so tell me one thing. What is it, if you had... Um, the ability to communicate to everybody out there that's watching um, something about autism. Like, what would you want them to know about individuals that are diagnosed? Like, what's that one thing that you wish the world understood? So I would like for um, uh, the world and everybody else to understand about autism. That would be, well, the basic symptoms, which means that um, they may take time to catch on to be certain behavioral and social cues. And also, it takes time for them to process information given to them that uh, most of the time they would be able to um, produce uh, good outcomes from the information that they receive. Mm -hmm. And they also, what's also very important is a lot of them they, they need to have an, an advocate, somebody that can speak out for their um, diagnosis in case if they can't, they may not be able to do so themselves. And it's important for them to, for others, to, uh, for pe people with uh, ASD to be recognized because they have something, they, they mostly have something that they would like to offer to the society. And um, the, the barrier is the certain behavioral and social aspects that may uh, limit them in, from, you know, being able to enter a certain position. Which is why we have a program. It's called Abilities at Work. I work at right now. I work at an information desk, mm -hmm. and I was hired because um, uh, I had a friend who also was also on the spectrum. He was working there, and he also decided that you know we need to have a a, a certain program that allows for the the management and human resources to reach out to. Um, the uh, students that, have, uh, that are on the spectrum to be able to have the opportunity. They need to have a position so that they can be able to springboard onto other opportunities later on in life. Right, that makes a lot of sense because it sounds like you said you picked up a lot of your social cues by being in circles and hearing how people communicate and communicating yeah. as yourself, communicating. So I have to ask you this one question. What do you feel like your autism superpower is? I think my autism superpower is just being able to uh, uh, con uh, connect with uh, others. Just like I'm just really interested in connecting with others that also have the diagnosis and um, being able to act as their, their role model and somebody that they can reach out to. Maybe sometimes they may not feel um, too good about a certain situation, so they I know they know to contact me and I can offer them as many advice as I can from my perspective of being in college and being in doing other, uh, uh, achieving other milestones. I wanna let them know that, you know, it's okay. If they can put their minds to it, they can achieve whatever goal they would like to achieve. That is so amazing. Um, I don't want to keep you here. I know that your parents are probably dying to give you a hug <laughs> and get you off the set. But I want to say to you that um, your story that you're sharing with all of us means so much. It's encouraging for me because my son is only 12 and he went through the whole nonverbal being verbal. And mm -hmm. um, it's encouraging to see you sitting across and talk about college and dating. And I'm actually glad you're waiting until you're a senior <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to begin the dating experience. Yeah. Um, one thing that I would say, what would you encourage parents who are who might have a child that's on the spectrum who, you know, right now sometimes it's hard for us to see our kids' future. Yeah. What would you say to those parents? Uh, early intervention and um, finding those right, the right teachers and staff that would really care and act as a role model for their children with the ASD is something that's going to be very important. And it all, it's all based on location. I know Westchester is a great location. Westchester Area School District is, has been like a great location um, for those uh, services mm -hmm. to be present. And it's all about finding the right programs and making sure that their child, 
their their children have somebody that can speak out for them and teach them um, the the essential behavior social and behavioral skills and not only does that happen in teachers but there also needs to be more of those um, uh, social groups like su support friend groups mm -hmm. and that that just entails how to be able to have have be comfortable in having a conversation when, with one another like autism play groups or something yeah, like something that, like right? play groups and social groups and then we'll have that also that also entails an activity a fun activity like going out to um, the movies or uh, playing a, um, a game for them to have a chance to interact with each other they need they need as much of those opportunities as they can so that they can be exposed to those and be able to learn as uh, experience as much as they can and hopefully build on to future experiences and important uh, uh, responsibilities that they may need in the future. They may not feel it initially, mm -hmm. but over time, if you give it a couple of years, like especially for me, like I give it a, a year or two after some of the programs I went to and I'll start to think, wow, that, that really has helped me. I really learned this. I really learned that uh, how to be able to uh, present myself professionally. I really learned how to be able to uh, respond appropriately to situations. There are all of those important like uh, social skills and responsibilities and behaviors that just are n essential to the de future development. Well, I think that that's amazing and thank you so much for being here today and sharing that. Um, it's very important for our parents to know and I think it's extremely encouraging. I'm trying not to cry all over you. Yeah. Um, but I think it's important for our parents and people to know that, you know, our kiddos have challenges in the beginning, but if we just hang in there and remain encouraged in the process, encouraged. walk through the process, yes. connect, connect socially with other people, whether they have kids on the spectrum, parents that look like us and people who are going through the same things, that it'll help us. Um, be able to help our children better too. Oh, yes. So thanks for being here. Thank you. That's all the time we have for On the Spectrum. Please log on to www.onthespectrumtv where you can hear stories like this as well as subscribe to our show, download resources, and leave comments. And maybe you're interested in being a guest and sharing your story with us. This is the only way that we can create awareness for autism is unless people like Ardika are here to share their story, their testimony, and encourage people. Thank you for tuning in. See you next time on The Spectrum. Thank you very much. Thank you.